The Ravens are circling and the Scots are ready to attack. Find out what happens next on Quiz Kids. It's the Bay Area Quiz Kids. Brought to you by the San Mateo Credit Union. And now, the best host on the West Coast, Brad Friedman. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Quiz Kids. I'm Brad Friedman, and we have two great teams to start us off. Over here, we have the Sequoia Ravens. <laughs> And they are facing the Carlmont Scots. <laughs> Welcome, teams. Let's get started right away with your first toss-up question. On March 5th, 1770, British troops fired on a mob of colonists and killed five. <laughs> Casey. The Boston Massacre? That is correct. For 25 points, one of those killed in the Boston Massacre had African ancestry. Chris Name him. Oh. Christmas Attics? That is correct. And for 50 points, in the 19th century, a monument to Attics was placed in what Boston Park? Fenway Park. No, the Boston <laughs> Common. The Boston <laughs> Common. Here's your next toss up The Wabagong, Thresher, Mako, Dogfish, and Hammerhead. Yes, Alejandro. Sharks. That is right. For 25 points, name the author of the novel Jaws. You can go ahead. I don't know. I don't know. That took you in a different direction, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no answer? It was yeah. Peter Benchley. Let's stop, think about those sharks, and talk to our contestants. First, from the Ravens, Clara McAvoy. Hello. You um, help special needs students in a really remarkable program that I'd like you to tell us a little bit about. Yeah, so I participate in this program. It's called SNAP. It's at my dance studio, which is Dance Art Center. And basically, SNAP, we put on performance at the end of the session, and it's people with all different abilities, um, special needs children, and then each child also has a buddy, which helps them. We help them to dance and sing, and it's just really fun and inspiring. So you're one of the buddies who works yeah. with kids. Great. Well, that's a wonderful, wonderful program. I'm glad we could let people know more about it. Marissa McAvoy. You are part of the Spanish Club, and you're raising funds for a very exciting thing. Yeah, it's super cool. We're basically, there's 30 of us in this club, and we're all going to Spain this summer for three weeks, and we stay with host families in a place near Madrid. And actually, Carmen is my co-president of the club. So, so you guys are both going to come fun. back and tell us all about Spain next yes, year. Yes, it's very How exciting. exciting. Good <laughs> yeah. luck. Thanks. Bueno for, yes, Wednesday. good, yes. <laughs> Carmen, Carmen, get me out of this. Tell us about the lacrosse team. Uh, well, I just started playing lacrosse last year, so I'm really new to it, but a lot of my friends play, and it's been a really, really fun experience, and I'm just starting the second season now. And I asked you if it was like a little bit like Quidditch on the ground, and you said... I wish. I wish it was. I wish. <laughs> Me too. I love Harry Potter. Because then I would have played <laughs> lacrosse. Let's say hi to the Scots, and we have Casey Armstrong here, and she's a junior, and um, she uh, loves to cook. And you had a kind of an exciting event with your uh, Spanish club. Oh, for Spanish last year, then we had to cook a four-course meal uh, of um, some food of, from a country of Spanish-speaking origins. And I chose Chile, and we made some really good food. You made some really good. You made a fish dish. You yeah. had to kind of substitute the Chilean sea bass with something else, but it yeah. all came out well? Yeah, it was good. Well, I'm hungry. <laughs> Let's say hi to Alejandro Aguirre. You uh, went on a trip to Peru. You have family in Peru, so there was a kind of a familial thing going on there, but what did you do on your trip? Oh, um, well, once I got back to Peru, you know, I visited all around Lima, the capital, you know, went to all the sites, uh, the center, you know, world, it was a World Heritage Site, and it was all very beautiful. Good. And then I went out to the countryside and visited those areas, too. Fantastic. Nice. What a great opportunity. Becky Armstrong, uh, you and your sister are going to be going on a college tour at spring break. Yeah. So what's the plan? Where are you going to go? Um, we're planning on going to Boston. Um, we actually have family that came from Boston. So oh, okay. They... Should have known about the Boston Commons, shouldn't we? <laughs> hmm. Wow. <Well. laughs> now, you don't want to go to the same school, do you? Mm, no, but... We were thinking about going somewhere close so that we can still see each other. Yeah, and it'll be a local call. Yeah. Right. Well, good luck to you. School children occasionally confuse author John Bunyan with what fictional lumberjack? Paul. Carmen. Paul Bunyan. That is right. For 25 points, John Bunyan was a British author who wrote, an a wrote what allegory to inspire fellow Puritans towards heaven? Early to bed, early to rise, make something 
Marissa, your answer. Early to bed, early to rise. So close. It was called The Pilgrim's Progress. Okay. Next toss-up. What Confederate general married Martha Washington's great-granddaughter? Casey. Robert E. Lee. Well, that's the one we all turn to, and you're right. For 25 <laughs> points, the Custis Lee Mansion, once the home of Robert E. Lee, is now part of what military cemetery established during the Civil War? <laughs> Alejandro. Well, it's the Arlington know. National oh. Cemetery. Next toss-up. Of the 50 U.S. states, name one of the two that were sovereign nations before joining... Yes, Carmen. The Texas, so like the Lone Star Republic. Texas is one, and Hawaii was the other. For 25 points, the Texas state capital is named for what man known as the father of Texas? Houston? Well, no, it's Austin. Stephen yeah. Austin. Here's your next toss-up. Warren Harding's Interior Secretary, Albert Fall, went to jail for his role in what land scandal? Casey. The Teapot Dome. That is right. For 25 points, etymologists generally agree that what two-word phrase for the person who takes the blame existed before Teapot Dome? Scapegoat. No, we're looking at the Fall guy. Next toss-up. The Little Match Girl, The Steadfast Tin Soldier, and The Little Mermaid were all written by this author, Carmen. Hans Christian Andersen. Correct. For 25 points, a famous statue of The Little Mermaid can be found in what city's harbor? Copenhagen? That is right. And for 50 points, when a critic asked Andersen whether he would write his autobiography, Andersen said he'd already written it as which of his fairy tales? The Little Mermaid. No, he saw himself more as the ugly duckling. <laughs> Oh, so I know, I know, but it would have been weird if he thought he was a mermaid. So, <laughs> Sequoia 45, Carlmont 55, we'll be right back with the final round. Welcome back. Let's give a big hand to both the coaches of these teams. First from Sequoia, Mr. Tim Spence. And from Carmont, Patricia Bronstein. Thank you, coaches, very much. Let's get on with this. The game is close. Sequoia, you have a choice of the first category. All the questions will be worth 30 points. You just need one to get the lead. Try and get as many correct answers as you possibly can. Today's categories are They Might Face Giants, La Maison, and Secretary's Day. Which category would you like? They might face giants. They might face giants. Give these words, the are words that are also Major League Baseball team names. Okay? okay? This was the profession of Samuel Adams. Brewer. That is right. Nice. This is a fish caught by Santiago in The Old Man in the Sea. Marlin. That is right. The state bird of Maryland. Cardinal? No, it's like the Baltimore Orioles. Oh, the true. Orioles. The college that elects popes. Oh. The college? The college that ed that elects popes. The... the Go for it. Marissa? Oh. The Cardinals. That is the Cardinals, <laughs> right. Okay. Your coach is going, come on. <laughs> the range... The, uh, the, uh, the mountain range that contains Mount Elbert. That's not sure. The Rockies. That's right. <laughs> uh, this was a 2013 hit single by Lord. Royals. Right. Yeah. And finally, a venomous species of genus Crotalus. Diamondbacks? You got it. That's hey, six Arizona. correct. You got 225 points. Yes. <laughs> So come on, Sequoia is going to make you work to win. Do you want La Maison or Secretary's Day? You can choose. I have no idea. She'll <laughs> take love that one. La Maison. <laughs> well, that doesn't bode well because all of the answers are French. All right. No. The, fr okay. the questions are French. So the these are things in and around the home. I will give you their French name, like in you find in La, what's okay. it called? And then you tell me what, where it's found in the home, okay? Okay. It's all found in La Maison somewhere. <laughs> so 
<laughs> um, le jardin would be found where? The garden. That's right. La lumière. The lamp or the, light. The light or the lamp is correct. L'escalier. The skylight. <laughs> the skillet. The kitchen. Uh, no, the stairs. The stairs. stairs. Uh, okay. Um, you need all four remaining clues correct in order to win the game. Okay. Le, you're lucky I'm not saying this like uh, Pepe Le Pew. Le rideau. What does that mean? Mm. Wait, can you say that again? Le rideau. The bedroom. Sequoia wins the game. Congratulations. <laughs> it was the curtains or the drapes. Well played, both teams. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the future, and we'll be right back with our second match. Don't go away. Welcome back. Let's bring on two more teams to play. Over here we have the Menlo Knights. And in this corner, the Westmore Rams. All right, gentlemen, welcome. Let's start right away with your first toss-up question. Vacuum tubes worked on the principle that electrons are emitted from a heated metal in a vacuum. This effect was named after what prolific American inventor? Brandon. Edison. That is right. For 25 points, vacuum tubes were mostly phased out in consumer electronics by the 1970s, except for CRTs in televisions and computer monitors. What kind of tube is a CRT? Crystallized radiation. I don't know. I just... Crystallized radiation? No, cathode ray tube. Let's get to the next toss-up. What sort of poem shares its name with a county in Ireland? Brandon. Limerick. Yes. For 25 points, how many lines or stanzas are in a limerick? Six, six, seven, six, seven, six or seven. Uh, seven. They're Irish. They want to be lucky. Seven. seven. Five. Uh, one. There once was a poor boy named Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know where this question was landing. I'll work on that. Next toss-up. What is the term for two words that sound the same but are spelled differently? Brandon. Homophones. No. Oh, you can steal, Menlo. Talk it over. Homonyms. That is right. For 25 points, what is the name for words with the same spelling but different meanings? No, no answer. I didn't know either, and I'm really old. Homographs. Homographs. Here's your next toss-up. What hormone is produced in the islets of Langerons? Andrew. Insulin. That is right. For 25 points, the islets of Langerons are located Pancreas. in which organ? Pancreas. The pancreas? Correct. And for 50 points, according to the Johns Hopkins Medical Center, what habit is the number one risk factor for pancreatic cancer? What habit? Is it eating? I don't know. I'm drinking. I don't, but that's like a lever. I don't know. Is it Brandon. Stop drinking. Smoking. Oh. Cigarettes. Oh, mm -hmm. Next toss up. The demigod Percy Jackson, my cousin, kills a minotaur in which first novel of the series? Yes, Brandon. The Lightning Thief. Right. For 25 points, the Chimera Brimstone sends the art student Karu to collect teeth in which 2011 novel by Lainey Taylor? Collect teeth? I don't know. I don't know. Brandon. The Lovely Teeth. The Daughter of Smoke and Bone. So let's stop for a moment and say hello to our teams. Uh, first from Menlo, Jeff, you are a freshman and an avid fan of a very old game, Dungeons and Dragons. Well, avid's a bit of a stretch, but... <laughs> kind of a fan, sort of, when you feel like it. Let's go with that. But you're playing it in a more modern way, I hear. Uh, yeah, I usually play over Skype with some of my friends. One of them is in Arizona, the other is somewhere in the LA-ish region. So practically international, Skyping Dungeons and Dragons. Well, not international, but sure. <laughs> sure, why not? Okay, and you're an elf. Uh, Just yes. So we'll sometimes. clarify, because I said something wrong in the interview, and you said, I'm an elf. Yeah. And I should have known that. I'm sorry. I, I should have been able to tell that. Peter, you're a senior and a soccer player. How did soccer season go for you this year? Um, well, we finished third in our league this year. That's good. And unfortunately, though, we missed out on the playoffs on the last day when we lost oh. to Kings Academy. Well, but you came up to the playoffs, and you can't ask for too much more than that. Yeah, right. it was a good season. Good for you. David Nam, uh, you're involved in applied science research. How do you take part in that at school? Yeah, so it's a, a course that you can take, and uh, 
in second semester, you get to build basically whatever you want. And, and what are you building? So I'm building a wireless phone charger. So um, you can uh, so, basically just charge it wirelessly. So people will be coming up to you and saying, David, can I borrow your second semester research project? Right. Right. Good for you. All right. Let's say hi to the Westmore team in Dust Ball. You're a senior, and you wanted to do a shout out for your math teacher. Yeah, um, for Mr. Adams, who is my and Andrew's calc AP Calculus teacher. Um, He's the first person we've met who loves math so much that he would take all of his spring break just to grade our tests. Like, that's what he, t that's what he did. That's true love. Yes. That is. That is. That true is. Love. Well, thank you, Mr. Adams, for thank your you, passion Adams. for math. Brandon, um, you uh, have been playing this game all four years. Uh, you three figured, years. Three, three years? years? Oh, just three years? Yeah. Took a year off. So you figure this is like your 14th or 15th match. Yeah. And you've run out of topics to talk about. Unfortunately, it appears so, but if we make it to finals, I will think of something. So there you go. Because if you don't come up with a topic, then you're disqualified automatically from finals. So good luck. Andrew Redondo, you're a senior, and you are part of the school choir, mm -hmm. and you have a competition coming up. Yeah, so next month, our school's choir is going to be heading down to Anaheim to compete in the Heritage Music Festival. I love when they all say, we're heading down to Anaheim. Disneyland. Like, there's no place you're particularly going to go. Yes, Just generally Disneyland. Anaheim, huh? Disneyland. Oh, yeah, Disneyland. <laughs> there you go. Well, home. have fun. I mean, sing well. <laughs> sing well. And let's get back to your next toss-up question. Most of Greenland and Arctic Siberia is what biome where tree growth? Yes, Andrew. Uh, tundra. That is right. For 25 points, Arctic tundra occurs north of what other biome whose name is also a two-syllable word beginning with T? Taiga. Taiga. Right. And for 50 points, taiga is characterized by what kinds of trees that include cypresses, firs, and pines? The ones that, like, don't. Brandon, your answer. Evergreen, coniferous. Conifers. Well, you know what? He said evergreen, coniferous before I said conifers, so I will give that to you 50 points. Give him a hand. Right. You're lucky my hearing's still pretty good. Toss up. What would a horror movie producer call a corpse reanimated by a voodoo priestess? Brandon. A zombie? That is right. We're mostly, we're disease zombies, but this was the old time zombie. For 25 points between 1982 and 1984, ethnobotanist and anthropologist <coughs> Dr. Wade Davis looked for evidence of real zombies in which Caribbean nation? Oh, Haiti. 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 Haiti is correct. For 50 points. In 2009, Seth Graham Smith published a mashup novel in which he placed a zombie epidemic into which Jane Austen novel? Wait, no, is that? Is that from Jane Austen? Pride, Pride and Prejudice? Yeah, and Zombies. That's right, you got 50 oh. points. <laughs> Here is your next toss up. This country is the northern neighbor of Macedonia. What landlocked Balkan country was once led by Slobodan Milosevic? Diaspal. Serbia. That is right. For 25 points, Serbia was formally united with what nation which became independent in 2006 under President Filip Vujadovic? Montenegro. Montenegro is correct. For 50 points, Milosevic was tried for crimes against humanity by a UN court located in what Dutch city? The Hague. Which city? The Hague. The Hague? That's Das Ball's right. Just pat Das Ball because he gave you 50 points. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's your next toss up. He wrote about his own blindness in a sonnet that begins When I consider how my light is spent. Who was the 17th century English poet? More? Yes, Jack. Shakespeare. No. Who, more famous for an epic featuring Adam, Eve, and Satan. Oh, Milton. 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 That is right. For 25 points, what was Milton's epic whose theme is the fall of man? Paradise Lost. Right, and for 50 Paradise. points, in one of his last works, Milton wrote a drama about which Old Testament figure who was captured and blinded by the Philistines? He wasn't like literally blind. Who's the one blinded? Brandon, yeah, your answer. Good. Paul. Samson. Mm. Oh. Samson. Oh. Samson. 245 for West Bar, 10 for Menlo. Will they come up from behind? Let's find out when we return from this commercial message. <laughs> Welcome back. We have our judges here. Let's give them a big hand. First from Menlo, Mr. Richard Steinberg. And from Westmore, Mr. Alan Bronstein. 
Thank you so much, gentlemen. All right, Menlo, you are far behind, but we're going to give you a chance to catch up. The questions are worth 50 points today, and you need five to take the lead. You get to choose the first category. It will be out of these three categories. Will it be three on a bard, play it again, or the extreme quiz? The extreme quiz? The extreme quiz. I used to have extreme lightning round on this show, and I used to say extreme. That was the most exciting thing about that round. But anyway, the extreme quiz. Name these things that are extreme for the US as of March 2015, okay? It's the longest running animated TV series. Simpsons? That's right. It's the smallest state by area. Rhode Island? Correct. He was the president who served for the fewest number of days. Harrison? I need more. Henry Harrison. Say again? Henry Harrison. Okay, William Henry Harrison is right. It's the least populous state. Wyoming? That is correct. It's the lake with the largest volume of water that's entirely within the United States. Uh, Great Salt Lake? No, uh, we're looking for Lake Michigan. It's the state with the most electoral votes. California. California? That is right. You've got the lead. It's the newspaper with the largest circulation. New York Times. The Wall Street Journal. All right. So, Westmore, you need one correct answer. I think you were at this point before last time, right? So you need one correct answer, and if you get that right, Brandon better come up with a category to discuss, or they don't get to play anymore. Will it be three on a bard, or play it again? Three on a bard. Three on a bard. In which Shakespeare play do these sets of three characters appear? If you get this correct, you will win the game and move on. Ophelia, Laertes, and Polonius. <laughs> Hamlet. You won the game. Congratulations. Thank you for playing Menlo. Thank you, Westmore. We'll see you soon. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.